Hey guys, welcome to How to Program in C++ Episode 2. Now, today I thought we're mostly going to be going over what we did last time, uh, but giving a slightly deeper explanation and kind of rounding things out a little bit so it's a little bit easier to understand. I still don't expect you to come out of this episode with a full understanding of exactly what every single line does, but you'll at least have a better idea how to use each line and uh, hopefully a better idea of what it does. So let's first start out with white spacing because uh, this is important. With C++'s syntax, well I guess it's not important, it's what I'm trying to say, you can have as much spacing as you want. You can put in random spaces just anywhere and it will run. You don't want to do this because it will make your program very difficult to read. Like I could do something like this, just have my tabbing all off Okay, that deleted something. <laughs> but you get what I mean. You, you could... Oh gosh, Codeblocks is trying to sort out my mistakes that I'm making. But I'm trying to do this on purpose, Codeblocks, to show off that it still works. So that's really the first thing that I wanted to go over. Don't worry too much about it. Even spacing in some lines does not matter. You could do that, you do that, and it would all work fine. So. Next thing I wanted to go over, real quick, is the preprocessor directives. Now, preprocessor directives are basically any line with a hash symbol before it. Um, and the way they work is you p hit the hash symbol, you write your line, then you hit enter. You don't have to put a semicolon at the end of these. Uh, you can do, and it probably won't cause an error, but you shouldn't. Uh, they're single line things, so if you take a new line, you have to do a new line. I believe there is a way to do multiple lines uh, by using slash n, but I, I don't know. They, they, for the most part, for each preprocessor directive that you put down, you want to use a hash symbol. Now, this is one of those really complicated things that will go on, well, it's not really complicated, but it's, it's fairly complicated for right now. It's out of the scope of this tutorial, so we'll go over those later on, but I thought I'd make sure you know what they're called and why there's a hash symbol there. Basically, what it does is the preprocessor is something that runs just before the compiler uh, compiles all your code into proper machine code and it does whatever instruction that you give it. For example, in this case, it includes the file that contains all the input and output functions. Uh, so that's pretty much it for that. Uh, this is a very much a tidy up episode, I guess. Um, next thing is namespaces, why we're using why this line even exists, this line doesn't have to be here. What this is doing is telling the compiler, I'm going to be using the functions from the STD group of functions and classes and stuff. Don't worry if you don't know what functions and classes are yet, just uh, any... Uh, this is a something from STD. So if we were to take this line out and we try and compile, it will be like C out has not been declared because it, it doesn't know where C out's from. When we put this in, the compiler's like, okay, if I don't if I don't find it, then I'll look in STD because you've said that that's what you want to use. But you don't need that there. There is a way to get around that, and that is by typing STD colon colon. Now what you're saying here is go to the STD group or namespace and look for C out and then it will find it there without you having to specify beforehand that that's exactly what everything is going to be because a lot of the time you'll be using multiple different namespaces so you won't necessarily be writing tons of different using namespaces you'll just be doing this um, so that's a useful thing to remember I'm going to continue this without using the using namespace line uh, you can put it back in if you want and remove this um, so, next thing, <laughs> let's go over taking a new line in the console output. So there's a bunch of ways to do that. Let's first give an example. So I'm going to type std colon colon because we're going into the standard namespace. C out two pointy brackets and I'm going to type in another line. Whoops. And semicolon at the end because it's a statement. Compile this and oh. 
Uh, both statements are on the same line. This is because we haven't actually specified that we want to take a new line. Um, so let's do that. Let's do a std colon colon c out not v out uh, two pointy brackets and then let's do use an std constant or function I'm not absolutely sure in this case actually uh, but it's called end uh, line and then hit semicolon uh, but it's it's read as end l <laughs> so anytime you're confused with what I'm saying, which this is one of those times that I am saying very confusing things, uh, just go into full screen and make sure that each of your lines are exactly like mine, because the chances are they will not work if you type something like N line instead of end L. Okay, let's do it. Yes, now our program has multiple lines. But this is a bit of a long way to write what we've just written. All this can be condensed into one line, so let's let's show you how. Let's keep those there for reference, so we can uh, reference what I already wrote. Uh, so it's std colon colon c out and then the pointy brackets, and then I'm gonna rewrite hello world. But this time, instead of ending the statement here, I'm going to do another two pointy brackets. Because all we're doing is streaming in data, and we can stream in multiple bits of data into one statement. So I'm going to type std colon colon end l. And then I'm going to stream in some more data, so more pointy brackets. And then this time quotation marks, another line. And then semicolon because that's the end of our statement. So this is the same as this, except from way shorter, so let's do it. Now, not, you won't always want to condense things down so much, because for readability purposes, this isn't a very readable line. Uh, but let's go and compile. I did... I entered count instead of C out, my bad. Hopefully you guys saw that rather than entering in count yourself. But here we go. Hello world, and another line, exactly what we had before. Now, there's one more thing that we can make this line even shorter, which is by not using this end line at all, I'm gonna take away everything in between the exclamation mark and the A of another, and I'm gonna, in between those, write slash N. Now, run it, and there we go, it puts a line break in, because this is like the line break character. Uh, you can take away spaces, this can be right up against other bits of data, such as hello world, it can be uh, right up against other letters is probably an easier way to say that, and it will still work, uh, just like that. So I guess one more thing that I want to talk about is uh, comments. Now comments are lines of code, or no, I guess lines of text that will be completely ignored by the compiler. Now how do you put in a comment? Well, there are two ways that are commonly used, uh, and pretty much two way, the only two ways. Uh, one of them is to, to put two slashes, two forward slashes I believe these are, the slash on the right side of your keyboard anyway, and then you can type whatever you want on this line, and it will be completely ignored by the compiler. However, if you keep typing on another line, then it will suddenly notice it. So let's, let's try compiling this without the two slashes does not work, because it comes up with a random error. What if we put in the two slashes? Works fine, completely ignores this line of code. Uh, or in this case, just random letters. Um, now, if you want to do a lot of comments uh, over a good few lines, then you can do this. You can do forward slash, I believe, uh, star, and then you can write whatever you want for as many lines as you want. The way that you close this statement is by doing a star and then another forward slash. I hope that is what that is. Um, and as you can see, the syntax highlighting shows where this is. And again, I can compile and it will completely ignore all this code between the two slashes and stars. 
Cool. Now, what's the use for comments? Because they seem completely useless. Well, they're for labeling bits of your program or labeling what bits of your program do. It is good practice to write out comments for bits of code just so you remember exactly what they do. Uh, in this case, there's not much in here that you wouldn't remember, but for the sake of showing what it means, uh, prints, hello world, and another line to console could be a comment. Uh, and this would, of course, be ignored. But later on, when you come back to this project, years on, you're like, oh, I've totally forgotten how this project works. You can go back and you can be like, oh, uh, this line uh, prints hello world and another line to the console. Okay, that's going to do it for this uh, lesson, guys. Sorry we didn't really learn anything new except from, well, enhanced what you already know. Uh, I guess comments are only the real addition, but next time we will get into variables and we will do some exciting things such as counting apples. Fantastic. Okay guys, see you next time.